Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Jay and welcome to the channel and welcome to Avaset Point, a brand new zoo build that we're going to be starting on the channel as of today. And uh, yeah, it's going to be primarily new build because we're running out of space in October Lake. We are still building in October Lake, no worries there. We will definitely be going back there to finish it up. Uh, you know, I'm not going to like just randomly give up on it like I did with my previous zoo build. Promise, I'm not going to do that this time. I really do want to finish out October Lake and I've got some really good ideas for how to wrap that up. But uh, I thought we'd get started with this because we've got the brand new European pack. And I apologi uh, apologize, this is a little bit late, of course, because um, I've been wrapped up in a lot of things recently. I've had work this week. Uh, I also have been in a bit of a creative block. I'll talk a bit more about that in a second. And of course, we've had Jurassic World Evolution and I've been uh, also working on recording some prehistoric kingdom for the channel. So just a lot of stuff going on. Um, first off, huge thanks to Frontier for providing me with the key for the uh, for the DLC so I could showcase it. Huge thanks, that's really, really appreciated. And I gotta say, it's a great DLC. I'm not sure if it's my favourite, but it's definitely very high on my list. And I know for a lot of people it is their favourites because um, we've got incredible new building materials. Like, uh, you can see on screen now, we've got this new rustic material, uh, rustic stone material. And as you may have seen right by the front of the entrance here that we're building, we have this new coach um, entrance point, so people will just step off this bus and enter the zoo, which is great. But yeah, um, before we go on, let's talk a little bit about Avaset Point as a whole and what it's going to be like. So, Avaset Point is going to be a temperate zoo set in the south of the UK, so where I'm living right now. So, think kind of south of London, the Brighton-ish kind of area, or maybe even further southwest, like going on to Cornwall, Devon, places like that um, where, you know, the weather's temperate but you also have like lots of these kind of islandy kind of areas like, you know, it's not obviously not tropical islands but, you know, islands nonetheless in the UK and uh, there's a lot of like nature, uh, there, there's a lot of focus on nature, the nature preserve and stuff in this kind of, in the southwest of the UK, you know, we have things like the Eden Project down there and stuff like that. Which is, uh, by the way, if you didn't know, massive like botanical greenhouse kind of like, it is really cool. Look it up. It's very, very cool. Um, but yeah, I wanted to set this in this area and because it's quite a unique uh, area to be setting it in, I wanted to find the perfect map for it. And uh, lo and behold, there's already one in the game which works really well for it. And that is the Jameson Wildlife Park scenario map, I believe it's called which I think we got either with the North America DLC or the Aquatic Pack, one of the two, and I can't remember which. But it works really well, it's this lovely, big, uh, kind of temperate grassland area with uh, these nice hilly backdrops, and it's actually on an island of its own, there's lots of water and kind of smaller islands around. So I, I think it works perfectly for the setting that we're going to be setting this in. Of course I'm not going to be super precise about it, like, when it comes to like road markings, for example, I'm not exactly like an authority on the matter, so I'm not gonna be um, quite so perfect with that sort of stuff, but I'll try my best to make it look somewhat realistic. And as you may have noticed, there is an entrance road and an entrance because uh, I realized while we're building an October Lake, we don't really have a proper entrance to October Lake, and I've been thinking about doing one for ages, but I thought we'll start like early in Everset Point and actually get into building the entrance right off the bat. So relatively simple entrance, but it is a long time lapse because I really was taking a lot of time to get to grips with the new materials. And like I said, I have been in a bit of a creative block and um, yeah, I'm just gonna be like a bit transparent with you guys. It has been rough for me the past few days trying to build anything in Planet Zoo. And I really don't know why. I think at some point you do hit a creative block and it's really rare for me in this game because Usually there's enough like inspiration for me to keep going. It's only ever happened like once before and that was when I went on a basically a two month break from the channel because not only did I have a creative break, I also moved across the planet. <laughs> so you know, at that, that time it was a bit more understandable. Right now I don't really know why it's gonna hit me but um, nonetheless I still think it's the game is always gonna be tremendously fun for me so what I kind of do there was I tried to push through it a bit but then I said to myself, you know what? Take a couple days, just don't touch the game for a bit. Maybe come back after that and uh, see what you can do. So what actually happened was after I did this entrance build, I tried to build a habitat for the fallow deer and it just didn't go anywhere. I was getting frustrated with myself, 
didn't enjoy it. So I, like I said, I took a couple days off and then I came back and built a much smaller, much more simple, just, you know, really simple habitat for the European badger. Just like something small to get started and to start fleshing out the zoo as we go forward. And uh, I found that to be quite helpful and I managed to build a nice little habitat, it's quite simple. But that's why you'll see in this video there's some point where things are kind of built off screen or like there's some inconsisten uh, inconsistencies, it's because I had that creative block and I had to kind of disappear from the game from a little bit to recharge. I'm not 100% back yet uh, in terms of my creativity and stuff. I think that'll come in the coming weeks and stuff as I kind of get used to the new pieces and the new animals. By the way, which are fantastic. The quality of the animals in this pack is some of the best work Frontier's ever done. And uh, the European Badger, which I'll show you today, is actually potentially my favorite. I really like it. It's just so cute and so adorable. And we got those uh, guest barriers, by the way, in a recent update. I believe that came with the North American pack and I just haven't used them. Uh, and uh, I'm using them here for a ticketing booth. It works pretty well, uh, except if your park's really crowded, then don't do like narrow things like that. Uh, but otherwise, it works really well too and looks pretty cool. I'm gonna mess around a bit more lights and stuff in the zoo later on, but not now. Also, I love that bus, by the way. It just works so well as like, you know, imagine that's a drop off point for guests and they come in from there. And uh, there is an external road network here. I built a very basic one. Um, and I'm gonna put down road markings and stuff in the future when. I can really be bothered basically and uh, that'll be like um, a lead down to a car park and stuff like that and I'll just add a bit more realism. And as you can see we fast forward it now to where I started working on the Badger Habitat. Again, don't expect a lot today, I was really just doing this, getting out of my creative rut and uh, I think it's a nice simple habitat and the Badgers themselves seem to enjoy it so I think it worked out pretty okay. But we'll definitely... Uh, you know, take our time with this, find our stride, and once we really get in there and start working more habitat, we can always come back and revisit the earlier ones if we find that we need, uh, you know, to rework them a bit. Like we did with the otter habitat in October Lake. Um, over here you can see we're starting to build a habitat, and that right there in the middle is the new burrowing item for the badger, and it can also be used by the aardvark. Also, by the way, I love these new trees. But, um... Yeah, so the badger can use that burrowing item and it's so cool because there is an actual burrow in the ground that they can access and there's a camera and you can see it in cinematics as well. It's just fantastic stuff by Frontier. I love that. I really love that they've been experimenting with different ways to do burrowing like they did with the meerkats and now with the badger. Really, really cool stuff. But while we're here, let's talk a little bit about badgers because they're very cool animals and they look beautiful in this new pack by uh, by Frontier. They're the fur textures and everything are stunning but uh, of course you'll see them in the cinematic they're so cute but I actually have a personal experience with the badger because so I grew up in Malaysia and I'd never seen a badger in my life and then I moved to the UK a few years ago like six years ago now for university and um, I think at all it was like summer of 2017 I was working for the summer camp part-time just to get a bit of extra cash etc and um, I remember because we had to stay at this like boarding school in the middle of nowhere in like Surrey basically and uh, <laughs> in the middle of the night I was walking back to my like um, accommodation because we just wrapped things up and stuff at the office and uh, I put away all the stuff and I was just walking home and I heard this rustling in these bushes next to me and remember I'm in the middle of nowhere barely any like lights around anything it's like a dark country road <laughs> And I hear this rustling and I looked, I just freeze because I'm like freaked out and I look at this bush and um, it slowly rustles and then it, out from the bush emerges this gigantic badger and I've never seen a badger before, I've only heard of them and I always thought they were like hedgehog sized or something but no, this badger was the size of like a small dog and I just froze, I was like, oh my god Am I going to get eaten by a badger? Obviously I knew I wasn't going to get eaten by a badger, but still, you know, I was like, badger, oh my god. And the badger spotted me too, and he just froze too, and we both just kind of stared at each other for what felt like forever. And then, and then I was just like, I didn't want to be the, one, the first one to move, but thankfully, this badger decided, okay, I've had enough of this, this frightened... <laughs> <laughs> this frightened Jay standing in the middle of the, the road, so I'm gonna go on on my business. So <laughs> the badger just waddled off happily 
but I was just like, like, just bamboozled? That isn't even the right word. I just didn't expect it and I just didn't think badges were that big. So that's my story about how the first time a badges, uh, well, first time I encountered a badger, I was just scared out of my wits, apparently. I mean, I think they're such cool animals. And if I saw one now, I'd be a lot more like, oh, I want to take a photo of that. But badgers are such interesting animals. They're burrowers, of course, and uh, they make these huge burrow networks, sometimes with up to 50 entrances. And uh, those can actually hold up to like a whole bunch of families of badgers. Like you could have 20 different families of badgers that chill in there. Badgers, of course, are carnivores. They eat uh, small vertebrates. They have this thing called a sagittal crest, which is uh, in their skull. If you look at it, the top of it is got this really uh, noticeable crest there. And what that is, it's, it's the anchoring point for these really powerful muscles. And a lot of carnivores have this because they need to have strong bite forces. And badgers actually do have uh, extremely strong uh, bite forces. But as uh, carnivores, they're not actually... So they're carnivores in terms of they're members of carnivora, that family of animals. But they are actually uh, omnivores. Besides small vertebrates, they also eat um, things ranging from like beetles to like occasionally even fish and just basically anything they come across, they will eat. And that's why I actually encountered that badger that one time was because at that summer camp, apparently that badger had taken up residence because the food was being, dis like all the excess food was being disposed of. And the badger had somehow got in there and managed to like basically just feast on whatever we've been leaving behind. And um, they ended up calling the badger Stanley, which I think is such an appropriate name for a badger. Stanley the badger, how cute. But yeah, um, the episode is pretty much coming to an end now. I hope you enjoyed my random story plus uh, a little bit of badger knowledge. And uh, yeah, look forward to more Avocet Point. I really look forward to continuing the park. And I should explain the name Avocet Point, actually. Um, I just would imagine the Avocet is a bird that's found in the UK. It's a wading bird with a really identifiable curved beak. And I thought maybe in this part of the UK, there's just lots of Avocet. So Avocet Point, it's really quite a pretty name, I think. So... Yeah, look forward to more of this series. I'll work my way out of this creative rut, I promise. Uh, look forward to all these other series that are still going on on the channel, like Jurassic World Evolution and stuff. Thanks, as always, for all the support. Do like the video. Uh, if you did like it, subscribe, of course, if you want to see more of this content. And as always, I will see you all in the next video. Bye!